Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Fernando. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I work for the networking services team, mainly focused on network management. And today we are going to talk about Linux system roles and network config with NMS state. Right, so let's go to the important part. What will you learn from this talk? So basically, when you walk out of the room, you should have learned uh, what is Linux system roles, what is NMS state, how we can mix them, navigating the API of NMS state and network role, and then the new features of NMS state. So ideally, this should help you to uh, configure all your networking uh, using Ansible and using the role. So let's go with the first part. All right, what is Linux system role? So Linux system role is a set of roles that aim to configure uh, new Linux components um, for different subsystems. It is a set of roles, but it is also available as an Ansible collection. So if you want to use as an Ansible collection, feel free to do it. Uh, we must say that it tried always to use uh, native library subsystems, uh, sorry, native libraries uh, from the operative system instead of using CLI commands. So all the time that we try to do it, we use the libraries directly. And it supports support a lot of those subsystems like Podman, Linux storage, uh, network, uh, SSH, uh, free IPA, many of them. But uh, today we are going to focus on the network role. So okay, the network role. So the network role supports uh, two providers. One is network manager and the other provider is init scripts. We are going to forget about init scripts. Let's focus on network manager. And it supports a lot of features. Uh, for example, a lot of interface types like Ethernet, VLAN, Bond, um, Bridges, a lot of them. Uh, IPv4 and IPv6 address configuration, DNS configuration, uh, routes, routing policy, uh, DNS option configuration, and uh, some uh, other utilities like ATH2 or authentication, uh, wireless. Yeah, plenty of them. Uh, let's check first some uh, examples of uh, Linux system role um, configuration file. The main, the, the main thing that we are going to focus here is that when using the network manager provider, we are going to focus on connections. So as you know, network manager uh, has their own configuration files, which are, are called connections. So we define a variable, which is network connections. And in this variable, we define the properties. In the end, what we are doing is translating a key file to a, um, a YAML file. So we have the name of the connection, uh, the state, the type, the interface name, and some other configuration that we would like to use. For example, IP address or uh, bond options like the mode or some other options like Moon or whatever other. And for example, in, because in this specific example, we are defining a bonding interface and attaching an Ethernet interface to it. So we can see like we have the controller property here and we need to define the ATH1 connection and then we uh, are going to uh, define the bonding connection. I'm showing this because my idea of this is show you then uh, later the difference with the NMS state configuration. In the other side, we have uh, Ethernet with a VLAN on top of it. So we have our Ethernet with the name connection plot and type Ethernet, autoconnect, straight up. The interface name here we are using just a variable from, from the top. I, we could place whatever we like uh, without DHCP connection, uh, sorry, without DHCP configuration. And then we have a uh, VLAN configuration with VLAN ID 100. All right. It's, uh, quite simple because I wanted to use simple examples to see better the difference. So basically this is the network role when using the NM provider and when using the network connections barrier. Now, oops, let's talk a little bit about NM state. So what is NM state? NM state is a library with an accompanying <coughs> command line tool that manage uh, the host networking configuration and it do it in a declarative manner. So it is written in Rust, and we provide a native Rust library, but we also have plenty of um, 
bindings to C, Golang, Python, and others. Um, one important thing and the difference is that in, when defining LMS state um, configuration files, we focus on the device. We are not going to focus on the network manager details. We are not going to focus on how the specific uh, network manager um, properties are going to be written. We only want to focus on what is the uh, what the <coughs> what the user want to be configured. So the user can define, for example, I'm the user and I want a bond interface with type bond, the state app. Uh, we define the different bond properties like the mode. Uh, the options like memo and the port. And this has the same effect than this. So this is the main difference. Here we are talking about uh, connection name, interface name. Here that doesn't exist. We only have the interface name. It's what is interesting to us. And also, NMS state here, we try to help the user. So if the user wants ATH1 and ATH2 configure and the interfaces are present on the system, um, NMS state will automatically create an Ethernet connection for them and it's going to manage them and it's going to attach them automatically to the bond. So you don't need to care about how Ethernet is going to be configured. Ob obviously, if you want to configure some specific thing on the Ethernet um, interfaces, you will need to define it. But if not, you don't need to care. Here, you need to define it because you need to define that is the controller and the controller is a bond. So more difference, for example, if we create a VLAN, uh, the difference is that we create the VLAN, ATH1.100, uh, uh, with the type VLAN, the state up, IPv4, enable true, and the others. All right. So what will happen is, for example, uh, this VLAN already exists and has something configured, or this bond, for example. In NMS state, uh, it will keep the existing properties and we only replace the one that the user specified. So, for example, if the user specified uh, MIMU 100, anime state is going to set MIMU 100, but the other properties are going to be um, um, considered and they are not going to be replaced. Here it is different, and in this case, it will replace the other properties because in the end it's rewriting the whole configuration. So this is done because uh, how NMS state works is that it fetch first the existing state, so it fetch the existing configuration, translate it to a YAML file similar to what we use, mesh them, and apply them. So it allows us to do uh, what we call partial editing. So that's quite great. But currently, NMS state by itself, it can only be used on um, your, your host. And we wanted to have a tool that can use NMS state across multiple hosts at the same time. And then we thought, the network will go. All right, so let, let's mix them. Uh, oh, we introduced the network state variable. So when using the NM provider, we, uh, I mentioned before the network connections variable, and now we are going to have something different. The network state variable. How is it going to work? In the network state, the user will define the complete network state that wants to be applied. And it's going to do it uh, using the NMS state schema. So in the end, if the user is already familiar with the NMS, NMS state API, they don't need to learn something new. They can use the same schema and apply it. As I mentioned before, thanks to this, using NMS state, partial editing is possible, and now uh, it won't replace the existing connections on the system. Not mentioned here, but also very important, um, NMS state has an extra feature, and is the, it does verification checkpoints and robot. So when you define an state, we call it desired state. First, NMS state is going to check the current state and say, okay, this is what we have configured. Using network manager feature of checkpoints is going to save a checkpoint. Then it's going to try to apply the settings. If something goes wrong, it's going to revert it. But if it 
went well, according to kernel, but then MST fetched again the existing configuration and compare it with the desired one, and it doesn't match, means that something was not configured properly. So it's going to revert back. Obviously, this can be configured to be disabled, but it's a really, really good feature because if you misconfigure something and you break your connectivity, it's going to revert back to the state before and therefore your, the machine is going to have connectivity again, hopefully. And also it's important that it simplifies a lot the API for the user because we will have, um, we are going to be focused on the interface instead of the NM connection. In the other hand, it is true that if you are willing to configure very specific NM details, this is not going to be able to be done by uh, using NM state because it's not the scope that we want to cover. All right, so let's see some examples of combining that. As you can see, this is basically an ATHT uh, Ethernet interface configuration. And here we have defined network state and we define the whole state that we want to configure. In this case, it's uh, Ethernet configured with IPv4 and IPv6. And yeah, and that's all. So it's, in my opinion, it's quite clear. And just by looking at it, even if you are not familiar with the API and it's the first time that you look at it, you should be able to recognize what is this doing. Then we can go to a little bit more complex state. And is the, for example, in this case, we are configuring routes and an ATH1 uh, interface. So the same thing here. Uh, we don't define the routes in a specific uh, network manager profile. We just say, I want these routes configured. And NM state will try to find out how to do it. So the user never need to care about how it is being done, basically need to care about what is going to be uh, configured. So right, so this is a sample of a route with definition metrics, uh, next hop, uh, table ID, etc., etc. Then we have uh, another example, which is, for example, uh, network state, and we have a DNS resolver. We can configure um, uh, the search and the server names. So again, this not need to be configured per profile. It's going to be configured in the whole networking. And this is quite good because in the past, for example, if you configure using this, well, using this schema, if you configure DNS in one interface and for some reason you need to drop this interface, the DNS is going to be dropped as well. And this way you don't need to do it. When you drop uh, an interface, as I say, partial editing is one of the main features of NM state. NM state will recognize that in the past the DNS was configured. So if the DNS configuration is stored in one interface, it's going to move it to another one. And it's going to move it to a different place or a global config in case there is no a suitable interface. So it is quite great because you don't need to keep moving the DNS or routes or routing policy configuration from one connection to another. You just need to configure it once and forget about it until you want to drop it. Um, no. All right, so how to navigate the API? The NMSD API is declarative and we try to make it as much intuitive as possible. So uh, it is documented at nmsd.io and it uses inclusive language. Uh, I recommend you to take a look to our webpage. Uh, we have um, documented the JAML API. We also support JSON and we also support uh, uh, some libraries like uh, Python, uh, Rust, etc. And it's also documented. So you can check the uh, library's documentation. All right, and one big benefit that we get on the network role when supporting NM state is that we don't need to implement things twice. Imagine that we have a situation where network manager have a new feature and NM state uh, supported it. If you want to use it for network role, it's immediately supported if it is supported on NM state because it uses directly. So. You then, for the developers, it's quite cool because we don't need to implement things again, again, and again. 
which is quite common when you have a diamond and a set of tools that interact with that diamond. Also, it's, bene it's uh, beneficial for the user because when we fix something in enemy state, it's immediately fixed in the world. Um, yeah, just say that uh, I recommend you to try it out. Um, I would like to hear from your opinion. Uh, we have mailing list. Uh, the project is on GitHub, um, enemy state and network role. And yeah, uh, there should be one more. Okay, here. So, right. So, uh, I would like to hear from you some feedback, questions, any comment at all? Hello? <laughs> What's the connection to Ansible? Is that direct or Ansible uses this? Yes, uh, you can use Ansible. I mean, you can use this as an Ansible role. So, in case you are configuring your or managing your infrastructure using Ansible, this is uh, part. This could be part of your tooling and apply this directly with Ansible, and it's going to be applied to all the hosts that you are managing with Ansible. So. Could you just pick up? Sorry. If I understand correctly, you need to install and then uh, and, and state yes. on your controller? Yes. Uh, like NSCLI or? Yes, but uh, as far as I know, for example, if you use, um, yes, NMS state is basically a client of Network Manager. So, oh, right, okay. I'm going to repeat the question for the stream. Um, the question was if you need to install NMS state as you install NMCLI. Uh, in your host to make it work. So, uh, yes, uh, but as far as I know, the network role is able to install the necessary tools when needed. So when you try to use it, it's going to install an state. Obviously, uh, this is not supported on uh, not supported distributions. So uh, I, I could check the, um, the list, but I think that um, supported distributions are RHEL, CentOS, uh, Fedora, and I think some more, but I'm not completely sure. Right, uh, it's fine? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, more questions? Something? No? All right, so I hope you enjoy it, and thank you very much.